Hi everyone, my name is William Shager, and in today's video I want to take a little bit of time to let you know that sleeping and living inside of a van is not as romantic as some may make it out to be. Although a lot of these things don't affect me directly, but I've put myself in your shoes and I've imagined how this life can become for some people. The first thing I want to start out with is that you constantly have to move around to find a place to sleep. And this does in a way affect me, but not as much as someone who doesn't live in a big city. When you're living in a home or an apartment, your life is very stable. Your bedroom is a few steps away. You can walk to it, you can take a nap, you can sleep, do whatever you want. But inside the van, it's a little bit different. If your van is not very stealthy, you stick out like a sore thumb, especially if it's a high top, especially if it looks like a motor home. You can't really park your van anywhere and fall asleep. Depending on where you are, the authorities might take notice and the neighbors might not like it. Plus, there might be constant signs that says no parking overnight. So finding a place to sleep every night can become tiresome. Number two, boredom and isolation are a thing when it comes to van life, truck life, RV living, etc. If you're doing this alone, like I am, you can become bored, you can feel isolated. Luckily, I have Rambo, and unfortunately, he's not here with me today. He's spending a couple of nights at my mom's place. But if you're bored and you live in a van or in a truck or whatever by yourself, it's probably a good idea to have a dog because you might not become as bored if you had a companion with you. Luckily for me, I take Rambo everywhere I go. We're always constantly walking around. We're always having fun. Throughout the entire day, we're communicating. I know exactly what he's thinking because when you're spending so much time with a dog, you know exactly what they're thinking. They know exactly what you're thinking. You have this way of communicating that no one else can tell except for you two. And that's what's special about having a dog. Maintaining relationships is absolutely necessary. And I'm very happy that through riding motorcycles and some of my hobbies, I've developed many good relationships and friends who I get to see quite often. But if you're not in the same situation, like I mentioned, a dog is a best friend and he will definitely keep you company. Number three, People who romanticize about living inside of a van and getting to see the kind of views that I see when I'm living in my van and spending nights in the kind of places that I spend think that this is a cheap form of living. In actuality, it's not. It can become even more expensive than having a brick and mortar home or an apartment. Number one, you have to deal with maintenance issues, especially if you have an older van. Number two, I live in California and I pay $5 a gallon for gas. Luckily for me, I have a vehicle that does 32 miles per gallon on the highway and somewhere around 21 in the city. So I may fill up once a week and sometimes I fill up twice a week. Aside from that, if you're not the type of person who cooks inside of your van or likes to cook, you're going to constantly spend money on eating outdoors. If you're spending anywhere between $8 to $10 per meal, and if you do the math, you can tell how much that's going to be per month. If you want to do van life the correct way, you would buy yourself a brand new van, you would hire a company like I did, but that would cost you $40,000 to start this lifestyle. Not a lot of people have that kind of money or credit to jump into something like this. And so therefore, getting a cheaper van will allow you to get into this with a lower barrier of entry, but it could also potentially lead you down to more expenses down the road by maintaining the vehicle a lot more. So therefore, it's not a cheap way of living. If I had to throw a number out there, depending on the type of vehicle that you have, if you have a brand new vehicle and all you need to do are simple oil changes, it can cost you anywhere between $600 to $1,200 a month to live this life very comfortably. On the lower end, $600 a month are just expenses such as gasoline, shopping in the supermarket, getting yourself water, maybe taking a hot shower once a week at a truck stop, etc. Personally for me, I'm more on the higher tier because I like to eat out once or twice a week and I like to cook as you see in some of my videos. Number four, as you can see, my van is a very small van and I would say most people who live in a van live in small vans like mine or something similar. Van life is a minimalist way of living and if you're not a minimalist, you will quickly realize that you need to become one. If you're the type of person who loves to shop all the time, you're not going to be able to maintain that shopping lifestyle while living inside of a van. So in the beginning, when you're starting your van life adventures, make sure you have a list of all the things that you want to purchase, but make sure they're absolute necessities. So therefore, if you're not a minimalist, you definitely will learn to become one. And if you can't learn to become a minimalist, then this life is definitely not for you. Number five, living on the road is really not easy. Number one, you have to deal with climate changes. 
So if you're going to be full time in your van, if your van is not fully insulated, like when I first bought my van, then in the summertime, this van is going to feel like a sauna. And in the wintertime, it's going to feel like a refrigerator. So having a van that's insulated is definitely a plus, but it's not an answer to everything because even though my van is now insulated, it'll never provide 100% insulation for all the heat and all the cold that I may experience depending on where I am. The other reason is that you're constantly moving around. It's an unstable way of life. Having a physical roof over your head and a home base gives you a lot more structure, provides a lot more stability and security. Number six, this goes with number two when I mentioned loneliness and isolation. So number six is all about finding it difficult to maintain relationships while on the road. If you're living in San Diego like I am, but you want to start traveling to different places, finding time to stay in touch with your friends may be very difficult. And in case you do move to somewhere else and you're there for a couple of weeks to a couple of months, the relationships that you have might change. So that's one of the downfalls of living inside of a van is that relationships may deteriorate over time, especially if it's a romantic relationship. Number seven, this one is a very, very important one because eating healthy on the road can be very difficult. The urge to go to your nearest fast food joint, McDonald's or Burger King or whatever it might be, might seem very lucrative because it takes away from the time to cook inside your van or outside of your van. The van is a very small space. Depending on where you are, you may or may not be able to cook, but there are fast food restaurants everywhere. So maintaining a good diet can be difficult for some people. Luckily, I love to cook and once a week or maybe twice a week, I cook outside my van and sometimes I cook inside this van. But there's always that temptation to go for fast food which may or may not affect your health if you do it all the time. Number eight, if you're constantly moving around, having a physical address can be very difficult. Now there are physical address services out there, but where it does become an issue is through online shopping. Luckily nowadays we have Amazon and there's Amazon lockers everywhere, but you may not always shop at Amazon. There might be a website that you might wanna shop. Unfortunately, you can't ship to an Amazon locker unless you're buying from Amazon. So having those things shipped to a physical address can be very difficult. But even still, even if you have a service that has a physical address, if you're far away and you're supposed to receive some very important mail, you're 3,000 miles away or 2,000 miles away, it can be very difficult to retrieve your mail. So the physical location of where you are versus the address where you have can become very difficult. And finally, number nine, living in a tiny little space like I am here, especially with a dog, you will be constantly cleaning. Luckily for me, not only am I very organized, but I'm also very clean. Before you start this van life adventure, take a look at your house. Things are not gonna change once you live inside of a van. However it is in your apartment or in your home, it's gonna be three times that inside of your van. The space is very small, it's gonna become very cluttered, and it's gonna become very dirty. If you're a clean and organized person at home, you're gonna be a clean and organized person in your van. As soon as you eat, you have to wash the dishes and if you don't it'll get built up it's going to smell inside here because it's a very small space i vacuum once a day because i have a dog but if you look at my van right now you won't be able to tell that a dog lives inside of it because it looks so clean and that's because i clean constantly after every meal i wash the dishes and i clean every single surface and finally number 10 bathrooms and showers are not within walking distance just like you would live in an apartment or a home. If you're staying somewhere stationary for a few days, unless you have a portable potty, like the ones that are on Amazon and the one that I bought, then you're gonna have to be parked next to a bathroom, such as a McDonald's bathroom or a park bathroom or something like that. That's one of the negatives of van life is that you're constantly having to search for a bathroom. The other thing is, if you're not living in a city, then you're gonna have to always find a shower. If you're somewhere in the boondocks, then you may have to go without a shower for a few days, maybe a couple of weeks, depending on where you are. But as I mentioned in my previous videos, there are solutions to it. You can get a USB shower. You can get one of those solar showers. There are a lot of different options out there. There's really no reason to be crusty and showerless. The point I'm trying to make is that it's always more work when you're living inside of a van. There are real things that are a negative to van life, and I wanted to portray that in this video and make sure that I put it out there. And if you found this video to be helpful and you learned something from it, please give it a like, please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Take care. Ciao for now.